Hey everyone, welcome to a, uh, another Weekend Projects Hangout on Air, powered by Radio Shack. I'm Nick Raymond. Uh, this week, coming to you live from the Engadget Expand event in New York. We'll be here uh, all this weekend. Uh, but today, uh, for this Hangout, we have an awesome lineup. It's a full full set today. We've got uh, the maker, Jay Silver. Uh, we talked to him about the draw audio, as well as Sean Michael Reagan, who worked on the Weekend Projects build, uh, techno editor for Make. And then we also have uh, Gary Rudd, who actually built the project, saw it on the uh, on the website, and then uh, posted the in, uh, images onto Google Plus. So we found him that way. So awesome! Glad to have you guys all hanging out. And uh, I guess Jay will kind of start it off. Um, I originally read that you kind of were in the MIT Media Lab, and you were in something called the Lifelong Kindergarten. Yes. What is that, and how did it lead to the circuit development of the of the project. Oh yeah, well there's you know a lot of stories there, but I'll just make it quick. Like lifelong kindergarten is mm -hmm. the idea that kindergarten gets it right and graduate school gets it right, but all the way in between it's all messed up. And if we could take the beauty of kindergarten, which was designed by uh, Froebel, um, you know, a hundred years ago, and apply it to the rest of schooling, you know, that you learn by sharing, you learn by creating, you learn by hands-on, nature matters, all these kinds of things. How can yeah. you apply that to 13-year-olds, 16-year-olds, adults in the workplace? And so trying to answer that question, so that's what that research group does, and that's what I was doing. And they sent me to India, and I was working in the slum school on, like, nature sensing, basically. Okay. And I was messing around with some electronics I had bought, like, on uh, some weird gray market like electronics road there and it was like a a little piano but it had metal pads and a metal wand and when you touched each metal pad with the metal wand it would make a different sound and there was a resistor ladder between each metal pad and the resist the total resistance added up the ladder and that was the sound you would hear out of the speaker and this was this thing and I was soldering it honestly it was like my third time soldering I wasn't very okay. good at soldering and I spilled some doll on it because I was in India and they have lentils there and it made some funny sounds and I started realizing you don't need the metal wand and you don't need the resistor ladder and the next day in this, the school you can see this on the Draudio website we were like touching it to everything and, and sounds were coming out depending on what the thing was and before you knew it it got its way onto a pencil and, okay. and that's how, where Draudio was born um, by accident. Crazy. That's interesting. Did the, so you, you started by hacking a street toy? Is that right? it, was, it was an electronics kit that I uh -huh. did buy on the street. So I wasn't trying to hack. I was trying to build something that would be useful. I built a heartbeat sensor and okay. a resistance sensor, and I was just playing around with them. Um, and by accident, I was like, oh, you don't, you know, wouldn't it be cool if, like, you, everything in the world made a different sound? Uh, but not that you could draw music with a pencil. But then later someone's like, dude, graphite's conductive. And, you know, it started all these conversations. Plus Crayola was coming to visit the lab. And I'm like, oh, Crayola, pencils, you know. The drawing aspect of it. And so now it's it started as a circuit. You can, in the project, at least for the weekend project, you can mount it to a pencil. You use the graphite and the pencil. And, like, in the video, you really draw your circuits. And then depending on where you touch, it... Maybe talk about the circuit a little bit. We could throw the schematic up too. It's using a oh, yeah. 555 timer chip, some really basic components. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's just it's just a you know a, a wave maker, a sound maker, um, and it the way that 555 timers are supposed to work, the schematic is supposed to have some resistors, and then it outputs to a speaker based on the resistors. There you go. That's great. I've never seen that schematic. So okay, so here's that, the schematic, yeah. That's great. So see, that's the exact same schematic that's been around for 40 years. And when Draudio was first posted on Boing Boing, someone commented, that's not a new circuit, and they're exactly right. They're being a hater, but they're exactly right. The only difference is that, see that person in the circuit at the top? Always put a person in your schematic diagram. It changes everything. So we just <laughs> replaced one of the resistors with the world. And in this case, that's represented by a human being. And it started out as, right, like um, an accident, and then it was a world exploration tool, and then it was a pencil, and then in the end we took it off the pencil and said, pencil's just one of the things you can invent with this, and you can see that in the video. And so this is kind of the form, at least, of the weekend projects, and as you mentioned, the pencil, but I even saw in the videos, there you go, you can actually just hold the pencil, and basically that can be what you use to hold the circuit, and you can use a water faucet, you can use liquid, you can use a paintbrush, you can add it to a fork. Yeah. Yeah, though it's, called, though it's called Draudio, you don't actually have to draw. It's really, it's like a probe. It's like a, it's, you can probe the world with it and make sound. It got its name before before it jumped back off the pencil. And so that's just a relic. But yeah, um, when 
when Klutz was going to do something with it, but they never did, they called it Sonic Electronics. So that would probably be a more appropriate name in some senses. And so, Gary, how did you find out about the project, and, and what was your experience with it? And, and you have a little bit of a story, too, with that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think I, I found it in probably um, one of your email or so, some online advertisement for Project of the Week. I, and I've never built before. I've had an interest in, in this stuff for forever since my Commodore VIC-20, my computer days, if I just dated myself there. And, um, and basically, I, I would read a lot. I understood a lot, but I never actually got to doing it. And, and so um, a couple of years ago, I picked up an Arduino. I thought this was fun. Now I'm getting hands on. I'm getting past just reading about it. And, you know, I've, I've got two kids um, <clears throat> that's six and eight, five and eight, whatever they are now. And um, basically, they were, they're, they're getting interested in this, and I think it's a great thing to teach them. And, and so we started playing with it, and they got sick of me just reading to them about <laughs> how this stuff should work in theory. And we found this project, and it, they saw the video, um, and they loved it, and I told them we'd build it. And I got them sit sit down. We went over it, and you know, since it was my first project, I didn't really have a great understanding of of moving from schematic to reality. And you know, with the video I saw online, it was really a great way to help um, you know bridge that gap. And so we built it. We had a great time building it. Um, we got got one here. It works. It works nice. great. And, and and you know, of course, with two kids, you build one, and that that starts to fight. And so I ended up well with you know dueling ones. So. There we go. I got two of them. It was they worked on the first shot, which blew me away. Uh, I did kind of use a breadboard, but it was it was easy. It was fun. It kept their attention. It was a great project, and then, uh, now I love this stuff more than ever. Nice. And now you have uh, audio and stereo, essentially, right? You got two of them oh, at yeah. one time. Yeah. yeah well, the nice thing about the sound is that it never gets old. So no, <laughs> enjoy <never>. it forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. And, and the kid now. now the cool thing is they always now now it's more you well know, what's the next project what's the next one which is great and and, and we're all loving it now so it's good. That is great. And Gary, we said this before we, before we went live here, but I want to thank you again for sharing your experience with us because that's no, sort of fun. Feedback that's totally fun. totally very rewarding for all of us who are working. My my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And so Jay, this started out as okay, so sort of like an accident. You're hacking or not hacking, but trying to put it started together. <laughs> And then eventually it became actually a kit that was sold on Adafruit. And so can you talk about what was the process to take a project and a circuit and make it into a, like a real thing you sell? It's funny that you asked me that because I hadn't thought about that. Um, the funny thing is that it all happened at Austin Maker Fair. I don't know if it was like about five years ago. And I was okay. just showing people Dradio and Lady Ada was there and people were like, you have to show this to Lamore Freed. Mm -hmm. And so I showed it to her, and she runs a company that sells, you know, kit electronics. And she said, oh, we should totally make this into a kit. And so um, she's picked up where I left off and, you know, made it into a kit. And now I'm going to make, a, you know, a product out of it besides the kit. And it also sells now as an assembled kit, which we call a fun pack, which is really, um, that's really the sweet spot that's more like along the lines of Makey Makey, where you just get it and you start inventing right away. Um, I love the soldering too, but sometimes, you know, Invention isn't about the soldering only, so like, you know, you get this thing and then you start looking at the world as if it's a construction kit, a musical construction kit in this case. So it was really just, I had already made it, I'm just goofing around with it, and then there's this magical thing called Maker Faire, which I didn't know about until I went to it, and I'm like, oh my god, this is really important. I think I'm a maker. I didn't know what maker was. I just want to do this for the rest of my life, and, and that's how it became a kit, was just by being there. Just yeah, being at the same, the right place, the right time, showing it off—that's awesome. And then, then uh, we actually—and and I have to just say that Lamore and PT's company is just so generous and effective at doing what they do, and that's really why it was that so was amazing. I want to say that 2008 Austin was when Lamore and PT met. I could be wrong. What? It, was it, was either, it was either the first or the second Austin maker fair when they met. So that was like that was an epic, epic event. Epic. <laughs> For the history books. And then again, so then it becomes a kit. It's selling, and then we, you know, contact you for the weekend projects and bring in Sean to then kind of take it back to what it was—a simpler circuit that's already, as you said, been around as a schematic, but break it down into to its parts, do a build. Um, how was that as far as a process? Did you have to reconstruct it and go back, or was it just kind of like, oh, hey, we know, it. we know how this works. Just pick some components and put it together. Well, it's it's it's, uh, it's a pretty simple circuit. Um, really, it's too bad that Michael Colombo couldn't join us on this call because he's uh, uh, chiefly responsible for the first board layout that we ended up using. Okay. Kind of a coll collaborative effort, the, the project that eventually emerged. And uh, uh, I guess some of the challenge was to uh, 
at first, I don't know if I hear it. At first, I thought I uh, I know it, the Adafruit kit uses a low voltage 555 chip, so you only have to have like a single small 1.5 volt battery, you know. But I couldn't find one of those at Radio Shack, and at first I thought I was gonna have to use a regular 555, which I think needs like five volts minimum. Yeah, so this is volts, yeah. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the original. Uh, this is the, this is the prototype I started building, which has. Four single double oh, wow. A cell holders attached to a pencil. Yeah, you really want. I, I always use a nine volt. That's why I use yeah. it. Or, or I, I thought about I thought about using a nine volt, and I was like, or oh no, cells. it's gonna be it's gonna be too heavy. But then I got about this far, and then I thought to check the Radio Shack website for because uh, I was thinking I looked for the one that the Adafruit kit uses, and they don't have that one. But then I found this CMOS one that they have that runs on three volts. And, and this is energy. yeah, this so uh, this is the second prototype, and it's a lot more reasonable. The carpenter's pencil. Uh, was a nice touch because it yeah. gives you a little more surface area to work with. Uh, you can see it's running on two two triple uh, A cells, and then this is, of course this is my prototype version that uses the mini breadboard. Oh, you just mount the breadboard, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love these little these little baby breadboards are one of my favorite things on earth. They're like they're like little zen zen palms, and you get one that's that's really elegant. I really love those. And then finally, this is this is not quite the finished prototype. I mailed the final one to California for video, but this is the sort of next to last one that you know you've all seen. On. And again, the perf how to uh, arrange the, the components on the perf board is mostly due to Michael Colombo. That was that was sort of his. He kind of optimized that. I think there's one on instructables too, a perf board, perf board draw and I don't know how much that influenced this thing. Yeah, there is, and there's a couple schematics uh, on the Drawdio site, and there's been actually like ten different variants put out there. I mean, anything that'll squeak in coordination with resistance, right? So. Right. This, this, so this is. I mean, it's. A, I don't know how greedily you want to get right. Of course, but it's a five 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 timer. It's this is. Uh, the chip can be wired in one of several modes. This is an A-stable mode. And this circuit basically is used in a lot of different sort of basic noise makers where you can configure it to like, in this case, it's, uh, you know, the, the pencil and the wire and the graphite are arranged to put your body in the resistive loop that controls the frequency. But you can put a photoresistor in there and it will respond to light or, you know, you can put okay. uh, uh, all kinds of sensors in there and, and make noise makers and uh, sort of pianos that respond to different changes in resistance. All you have to be able to do is change the resistance. Like, Absolutely. like sensor, it could be anything, and the same circuit will make different tones. And just to comment on what uh, Sean was just saying, actually, if you just take uh, your Dradio and then bypass your body, so like this thing, the copper wire that would normally touch your hand, just take an alligator clip and put that onto the piece of paper. Uh, then you can get a lot more accurate sounds. It's not as nice because you can't poke it with your finger, so that's mm -hmm. not as nice. But you can get really accurate sounds just uh, drawing down from the alligator clip. Um, really stable stuff. So you can you know you can change the way that circuit works by just bypassing your body with the alligator clip. Well, so Jay, it sounds like you can use paintbrushes or pencils too. I mean, what what is like a crazy wild version of you know the audio that you've seen, or maybe even you know the whole group comment? I mean, where where have you seen this circuit kind of like? You know, <laughs> apply. Radio circuits used in so many different scenarios. I mean, Jello is really amazing in combination Jello. with Radio. The reason it's so amazing is because Jello is just already amazing. But <laughs> but if you actually were, if you stick Radio in Jello, and this I learned this in a workshop, and pull it out of a little vat of Jello, then the Jello strings, almost like when you spit and your spit hangs there and it doesn't quite yeah. break. So the Jello strings like that, and then as it starts to flow, because it's like this solid slash liquid thing starts to flow and, and almost break, then what you hear is like and you're seeing it. You're seeing the jello and you're hearing the jello almost break. Um, and I've run workshops, you know, with Dradio at Intel, IDEO, like at Intel these people were pulling back this slingshot which would change its resistance and when they let it go, so you could hear it and they'd let it go and then it would fly and they would try to catch the thing and all this stuff. That's crazy. Um, uh, one of the crazier ones at Intel was actually a, a, a grid of uh, conductive copper tape with resistors, and then they had a little spider that danced on the grid. It was a vibro, a vibrobot, right? Oh, yeah. and, like, mm -hmm. and as it danced around on the grid, it would it would connect different conductive points to other different conductive points and make different sounds. So there's a little musical stage. Um, Stanford oh, used cool. it. Uh, <laughs> Stanford made this. Uh, some students in a grad class at Stanford made this whole table with styrofoam. And what I would call Jello, but it's some kind of slime, and uh, all these different materials with cotton, wet and dry cotton, and and they would allow you to touch the table, and then they actually sampled the sine wave and put it into a computer system to do complex sounds instead of doing the, the beefy sounds. Well, I could go on and on about things I've seen. Um, it's pretty. Those crazy. are awesome examples, though. Yeah. Gary, do you have an idea? 
Yeah, I, I never realized the story behind Drodeo. You know, I just thought it was, oh, just a weekend project he came up with. I didn't realize that's such a great history. It's fun to learn about it. It's got, uh, there's more to it than meets the eye on this one. So, um, uh, I was going to say, again, thank, you know, thanks for coming up with it. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It was the first thing I've ever, like I said, I've ever soldered. It's the first time I ever put things together for real outside of a breadboard and, and some blinking lights. And, uh, it's been encouraging. So if anyone out there is kind of nervous about getting their feet wet and starting this stuff, this is a great project. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome to hear the feedback. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, you know, I, I owned a hundred dollar solder I'd never used. I took out of the closet. You know, like one day I was going to get to it, and this was this was it. I broke it in. So it really is an easy thing to solder because there's uh, going off the top of my head something like three resistors, two capacitors, a speaker, batteries, and a very small analog chip. There's not that many things you can solder together, other than just like maybe LEDs lighting up um, that are simple. Yeah, it, simple. Is, it is a pretty good starting starting soldering project too. That's something to remember. Yeah. And it's uh, interactive, yeah. you know, so you feel like you can actually understand and you can you can hear and then see kind of the circuit working, you know, and you can get a, a real good visualization of what's happening. I mean, I Jay, just from your like slingshot example, I can totally imagine seeing someone pulling and like applying a force, and you know, the sound is correlating to like how long you're stretching, and like it it just has a really good Teaching, I guess, would be yeah. That's stuck in my head too, Nick. Actually, I may have to actually try that now. Yeah, yeah. Because it's cartoon, sort of cartoonish, like. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and, it goes. Yeah, yeah. and as a result of having Drotty around, like, I just start to know the resistance of everything. Like, wait, is that conductive? Honey's yeah. conductive, right? Oh crap! It sounds like it's not conductive when I stick the Drotty on it. Well, obviously, oil's conductive. It's just like water. Here, let me try this vegetable oil. Wait a second, oil's not conductive. But avocado is just like all fat, so then that's not conductive, right? Smear the avocado down the table. Oh, it turns out avocado is totally conductive. I guess it must have water in it or something. Uh, you know, you start like seeing the world as different resistors and and as a construction kit, which is like my whole thing is to see the world as a construction kit. I just like live on that. Um, but it turns out that one of my expertise now is that I'm one of the world's experts on knowing the conductivity of everyday objects just because I played with Drodio so much. I didn't want to know that just yeah. by accident. <laughs> your, your food tastes a little different with, with the graph fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, um, oh, shoot, my, my tangent, my thought. Jay, I wanted to ask you, and this maybe forgive me if this is too if this is too technical, but do you know um, with the as as the sound that comes the frequency the pitch that comes out of audio varies? It, does the duty cycle of the of the waveform vary as well, or is it just the pitch? Do you happen to know? Yeah, um, unfortunately, I was trained as an electrical engineer. I try to forget those days. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being silly. Um, engineering culture can be a little rough. But I'm kind of an artist, but uh, well, you know, I have, I have, I have a my both my father and my brother were, are, are electrical engineers, so I feel some of your pain. But... Uh, yeah, I just have a lot of feelings, and uh, um, anyway, the um, the duty cycle stays the same all the time. It's Okay. Set to fifty percent. Right. You can change the duty cycle. For example, I once took a Drodio circuit and put a huge capacitor on it to make the duty cycle be, you know, three minutes off and just like <laughs> three seconds on. And mm -hmm. that was about the limit of what I could get, um, no matter how big <laughs> I made the capacitor. So there must be yeah. some breakdown in the formula. You can find all these formulas on Wikipedia and everywhere yeah. else. So frequency equals something in relation to the resistors and the capacitor, and so does duty cycle. So you can I change just thinking, cause I, Yeah, because I know I know duty cycle will affect the timbre of the sound, right? So I wanted to, I didn't want to speak out of my depth and say that it would be possible to hack it to oh. change change yeah, the timbre. Yeah, you could. You could have two yeah. resistors open to the world instead of one resistor open to the world, oh. um, and you could start to change the duty cycle. Um, I mean, I'm just assuming you could. We got to try it and see if it really works, and it should change the timbre. Yeah. I, just, I didn't know if they might both be changing because I forget all the formulas. That's but a I'll good question. No, maybe I should check <laughs> into that. You know what? Maybe you are changing both. I'm yeah. going to look that up after this. That's really cool. <laughs> nice. Well, then, uh, I guess my only question I was thinking was, Jay, in the video, uh, at least one of the videos, there's tons of videos actually online, but I saw everyone was holding hands, so like maybe three or four people holding hands and then connecting them with a loop and then changing the circuits when they, like, you know, touch noses or whatever. Have you found a limit to sort of the number of, like, the human chain? I mean, Man, does your resistance just change, or...? It's so interesting. That's such a good question. First of all, like, as far as human circles and stuff like that go, like, Drodio was a whole... turned into a whole project for me that I called OK to Touch, 
like OK, the number two, and we're in mm -hmm. touch. It's a little known thing. It's not famous or anything. But it's powered by Draudio, and you can build things like that with it. Um, so uh, that was an example of a jacket that had Draudio in it that encouraged people to do things like hold hands. Because um, actually my mom is a, like a lactation consultant. She helps women learn to breastfeed. And she mm -hmm. always tells me how important it is to have skin-to-skin -skin contact for mothers yeah. and babies. And I realized, oh my god, when you touch each other, there's a lot of electrical voltage potential being shared. You come to the same so EMF romantic. and all this stuff. And it's really, and skin-to-skin contact is really powerful. So as far as human chains go, as far as I can tell, so everyone told me what the resistance of a human was. Um, right. And I just found that what they said isn't true because it depends how you measure the resistance of a human. And when you measure it with uh, 1.5 volts or 3 volts or, or 9 volts like you do with Draudio with a DC current like that, I find that the resistance of a human is between 100 kilo ohms and a mega ohm. You can go a little under 100K if you get wet enough and squeeze hard enough with your fingers. Mm -hmm. um, or it could go above a mag. If you barely touch someone, you could get all the resistance you want out of it. Um, but as far as like the human resistance, yeah, say like a mega ohm, and then you add a second person in. Oh, well, then it's going to be two megs, right? Because resistance adds linearly. Oh, nope, it doesn't work that way. Why? Really? I don't know. I mean, if you look at the formulas for resistance, it's not just linear, it's, just it's also interior. has to do with area, and human beings are very area, and the, the electrons, they flow on the surface of your skin, they don't flow through your body. This is what someone told me, and it makes sense to me, when, it, when this low voltage DC. So you mm -hmm. add another person, and there's something going on that's totally nonlinear, it changes to like 1.1 mega ohms, and you start adding tons of people in it. You could still only be 3 megs or 100 megs or something like that by the time you had 200 people. Um, it doesn't scale linearly, and then you can hear that, right? Because the sound doesn't change much. I'm like, oh, add another person. Clearly, the sound will get deeper because we're adding more resistance. And I didn't find that works. Uh, Sean, do you have two people in the house to try it with? I don't have anyone else home right now. Otherwise, I totally would. And I, I am going to have to try it myself because I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe me either. All my, all my do not trust me. <laughs> this is the basis of being a maker. Do not trust anything but experience. Try it. I just, well, I, I mean, didn't believe me. Yeah, well, I think that'd be like the perfect thing to pose to the viewers online. And if you're hanging out and watching us, uh, try it. Build the circuit. Let us know what happens. How many people can you get in a in a chain, and does it still work? Maybe but, somebody uh, can explain to us some. Or we could talk. Maybe we could talk to the MythBusters and ask them to figure out. There what you people, go. People are not Whole serious resistors. Hangout. Yeah. <laughs> well, not bad, serious. Spot. But I wanted to, uh, pretty good time to wrap it up, but I want to say thank you to Jay Silver. Awesome. Been a great hangout. Uh, and thank you for sharing the circuit with us. And then, uh, as always, uh, Gary, thank you again for posting your images and uh, sharing with us and, and Sean for hanging out. Um, again, uh, the Make staff will be over here at the uh, Expand event all weekend. So if you're around in New York, come by, uh, hang out, chat with us. We're going to be showing off some 3D printers. We'll have a couple uh, live demonstrations going. And, uh, again, you guys, thank you so much. Um, We'll be here at uh, Expand Events, and uh, thank you again for the weekend project. Hang Dudes, out. Dudes, thanks for letting me hang out at Maker Media. This has been awesome, and uh, the world is a construction kit forever. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank thanks, you all. Dave. Take care. Bye.